Uh oh. <laughs> Here we go. Ah. Sweet. <laughs> anyway, hi there, listener. This is Sean Harris, and I'm uh, with. Um, yeah, we talk about Sorry, yeah, yeah, we all, we need to we need to practice this one. We always get this wrong. I'm bad. I'm a bad person. Bad, bad taco. Naughty, naughty host. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it a very bad boy. You're a naughty host. I know. <laughs> um, I'm evil. So, uh, this week, uh, Paco and I will be um, today, uh, January twenty seventh, is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and it's the day where we. Um, memorialize the, the victims of the Holocaust, not not just the Jewish ones, but that includes uh, the Roma um, and other peoples that were targeted for extermination. And given that Paco is Roma and I'm Jewish, we felt that, uh, well, we agree that it, it'd be kind of appropriate for us to discuss what we'd like to see representation-wise in RPGs. And, and I would broaden that to include um, fantasy, sci-fi, media. And just, just to make that a bit broader because it's kind of hard to have a role-playing game specifically about one culture. So, <clears throat> Paco, have you been thinking about this? Or <laughs> I, I have. I have quite, quite a lot. And uh, before we start, I think um, also we should mention that, uh, you know, Roma... Uh, and Jewish people weren't the only ones that were targeted. You know, gay people, LGBTQI plus were targeted. People with disabilities were targeted and exterminated. And yes, you and I are queer, so we fit with that demographic as well, but not with the demographic of the disability. So um, I wish we could have somebody here on mm. that area as well, but unfortunately we don't. But I want to point out that we do not forget you, that we know you were there and you matter and we see you. And, and the second disclaimer I want to do, I know that this is a touchy thing for an awful lot of people. I refer to myself as Gypsy, not as Roma. I understand that this is a slur in the US. It is not in Spain. It is not in my country. It is not in my culture. And I am one of the people who want to retake the dignity of Gypsy, regardless of the origin of the word, of the etymology. I don't care. I am proudly part Gypsy. So if you hear this and you're upset, I'm really sorry. Get on with this because that is my culture. And if you want me to call you Roma, I have absolutely zero issues with doing that. I will not call you Gypsy if you don't want me to, but I am Gypsy and happy to be so. So, uh, having said that, <laughs> right, um, yes, I think we see ourselves, I am going to use brackets here, represented in, in mm -hmm. some role-playing games. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's important, it would be really cool if we started to see ourselves represented in two ways, or, or three ways, I'm going to say. One more often. That's where I start, and we can we can elaborate on that one in a bit. Secondly, less monolithic. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, less stereotypical. Mm -hmm. um, because I think those are the main three issues that I see whenever I see somebody represented in, in, in role-playing games. Well, firstly, there are way less gypsy people represented in in, in role-playing games that I would like to see. And the few times I have seen it, more often than not, it's, it's an incredibly stereotypical and racist <laughs> way to look at it. You know, the, I understand, I understand this concept of the happy-go-lucky nomadic gypsy camp that goes from place to place in these beautifully colorful and full of flowers, you know, with horses and donkeys. And, you know, the, the gypsy wise woman who reads the tarot and the gypsy men who are, you know, invariably and unavoidably thieves and rogues. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, just... That's kind of bullshit. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's bullshit. Yeah, um, I can. 
Yes. I want to say yes and to your point, because because it's something I noticed with the Jewish representation as well. Um, yes, more often. Uh, yes, more diversely. And, and please, fewer stereotypes. It's like, I love Fiddler on the Roof, but that's not all we are. <laughs> and, and Schindler's List is a great movie, but that's not all we are. Um, the... And on top of that, it's like, um, there's this phenomenon I notice sometimes where, um, the, the like, like fantasy media and role playing games borrow heavily from Jewish history, in some ways, but don't have Jewish people in it, mm-hmm. or they are analogized like people of color or, or Jewish people or whatever. So it's like, so they make this alien race or this fantasy race into symbolic Jews and not and they, but humans but Jews are not represented among humans and I get it to a to a large degree because so much about Jews as a people is tied to a particular place with a particular history but at the same time it's like you know I want to see you know like yes, I want to see that expand a bit. Like, cause my whole um, I don't want to say my whole shtick, but like people who who know who really dig into uh, Jewish history and culture and Jewish, I don't want to call it mythology, but Jewish folklore, and um, <clears throat> and actually have Jews present because there are so many interesting things to be done with Jewish history and Jewish folklore. Like um, like like for instance um, Star Trek because of Leonard Nimoy that live long and prosper gesture is a direct uh, comes directly from Jewish tradition oh. it, it's a um, it, it is part it is a gesture as part of a uh, <laughs> well, secret quote unquote ceremony that the priest the priest and no, I mean, not rabbis, but like the priestly, the priest, which is like an inherited status. Mm-hmm. It, it comes with specific responsibilities and obligations. The priestly cla- cast, cast, and I put that in quotes, like the, the priests among our people, the Levites, um, they do a certain ceremony. And that gesture is part of the ceremony. You can dig it up on YouTube somewhere where he talks about it. So the live long and prosper gesture comes directly from uh, Jewish tradition. And so people have um, made like their own personal interpretation of that meaning like, like, okay, so Spock's human mother is Jewish and therefore Spock is Jewish. Stop putting Spock in Christmas sweaters or whatever. But, (laughs) but, um, but it would be interesting if that were more overt Um, because, you know, if Vulcans are space Jews, if we're going to talk about space Jews, for instance, there's like this whole legend that there are, there are several human beings in like Jewish folklore and Jewish tradition that were described as having ascended to heaven without dying first. So to me, that says spaceship somewhere on another planet. Okay. And that, and you can use that, and there's so many different directions you can take that in. Um. But but yeah, it's like I'd, I'd like people to ex- exercise a little more imagination. And don't and like, um, and and not just use Jewish history and Jewish people as symbols. Like actually put people in there <laughs> and see what you can do with it. You know, somebody once told me, which I thought it was a bit oh, thank thank God this is through Facebook and I don't have you in front of me um, because I would be really upset. Somebody told me once that the space Jews in Star Trek were the Ferengi. Mm, and I yeah. was a bit... Uh, uh, you know, this is something that please, whoever, whenever uh, anyone is listening to this, stop, for the love of all the sacred, stop tying Jewish people exclusively to banking. Mm-hmm. and money laundering and, and, and money handling. You know, this is something that I see so many times in so-called realistic medieval games. Mm-hmm. 
there, there, there's a Spanish game where they only mention Jewish people in medieval times. And oh my God, we had so many Jewish people in medieval times in Spain. It was amazing. And they limit Jewish people to being tight with money, to being very shrewd and being disingenuous with mm-hmm. other people's money and just being that bad mm-hmm. bankers and selfish bankers. And we see that so many times. Yeah. Please stop with that stereotype. Or better yet, if you're going to be like, okay, that's the stereotype and it comes from this, or, you know, admit it's a stereotype. And you know, be honest about, hey, this is a stereotype. That's not what's really going on. That's just a prejudice in the setting. I can kind of understand it. But but again, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> See, but it's like I can kind of understand it. But but like, and that and that particular stereotype comes from a particular history, where we were forced into those positions because usury was. Is it usury or usury? Usury. Uh, usury. Okay, I'll just say usury was forbidden to Christians, but yeah. they still needed money. <laughs> <laughs> so they made the Jews do it. <laughs> exactly, but, it, but it, and, and the thing is, it isn't all that they did. They still needed right. to, you know, grow fruit and and have yeah. cattle and you know, eat and yeah, drink. They had, That's they had to make clothes. They, yeah. they were shoemakers. They were tailors. They were like they were bookbinders and stuff. They were, you know, it's yes, Jews were. Um, Yes, the, historically speaking, in, the, in Europe, Jews were cut off from mainstream society in a lot of ways. Like yeah. in the cities, we had our own little part of the city. <laughs> our own little, the Jewish quarter is pr- practically a fixture in every, you know, old midi- old European city. There's probably a Jewish quarter somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the walled off and everything. But, the, you know, we were still interacting with the society i mean like the talmud itself it was it's like it was some of our most um revered figures in, in in jewish history we're talking about um maimonides we're talking about rambam and um and um what's his name joseph caro and who else well he came back to israel so well let's call it um the ari or Isaac Luria, who came up with Luriana Kabbalah, and the, the people who wrote the Zohar. It's like a, a lot of Jewish Jewish diaspora history at the time was incredibly rich. Mm. And, and um, yes, even in Europe. Um, and if we're going to talk about in like in, Mo- in the Moorish areas, like especially in uh, the Iberian Peninsula, mm-hmm. especially in North Africa and the Middle East, it, it was a lot of it was like, it's even it's like there's even more going on because comparatively speaking Muslims treated Jews better comparatively uh, speaking I don't know I, I, I can tell you in Spain Jews and um, Jews and Muslims in whilst you know uh, Spain was as they call it here invaded by mm-hmm. the Muslims they were treated okay they I don't I don't think there was any massive differentiation the, the Muslims were very good with cities and places that sur- you surrendered mm-hmm. you know you, you surrender you, you know you just and that's it there's no issue you can keep going on at your own pace keep doing the same thing it's just that you know somebody who is a different person is going to be ruling you that's it but if you don't resist you're gonna be fine if you resist then wow uh, that was a different matter altogether that was that was different but generally speaking, Muslims were quite benevolent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, compared, you know, it's like, I mean, then you had the whole, especially during the Middle Ages, with like so much, many advances in science and medicine. <laughs> and <literature laughs> you know, and like, art. Oh. Yeah, that's another one that, that people overlook. It's like Jewish doctors, like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, where do you think we got those skills from? Yep. You know, it, you know, in Europe, you know, if they say, okay, well, if, if you don't get sick and die, apparently it's witchcraft. <laughs> but, you know, then in the Muslim world, it's like, look, this is how you prevent getting sick and dying. You wash your hands, <laughs> yeah. use soap. <laughs> and clean and like, If you see symptoms, keep them away from the others. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
<laughs> but, and, but and, and yeah, that was it's still so hard to understand for some people, isn't it? Yeah, mm. but yeah, it's like um, it's, it's like like you said, it's like it's a rich tapestry of cultures. It's like, and just like um, when you mentioned like Roma culture, it's like it's almost hyper local how the cultures are. Because it's not just countries, it's specific cities. Yes. Like the like Jerusalem. I mean, and this is like in, in Israel itself. Like historically speaking, Jerusalem, very different city from Safat. Mm -hmm. A very different city from Tiberias. Very different city from um Akko. Very different city from um and that's just like one tiny strip of land the size of New Jersey. <laughs> And if you're going to talk about global jewelry, especially like during the, like the medieval period that a lot of people like to draw from, it's like, okay, so what's happening in, uh, in like Eastern Europe, there's that whole pale settlement thing with the Russians and then that's a whole other ball of wax. But like the Jews in Paris, not going to be like the Jews in Frankfurt or Dusseldorf, not going to be like the Jews in, um, what you call it, Grenada or Madrid. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like specific cities were, were very much like, it, it was very, it, it's, it's hard for me to overstate how hyper-local a lot of it is. Like um, there's a specific Jewish community and I think it's Thessalona, Thessalonica, I'm probably mispronouncing this, like that's been there, that have been there for centuries and they got decimated during the Holocaust, but like decimated or wiped out, I can't recall. <laughs> And that's sad, but but like those communities, you know, were long standing and they were there for centuries. And and it's sort of like, and I think especially Americans when they think about this, it's like can because like, we kind of have this urge to want to make a big melting pot out of everything. And it's like no, it wasn't like that. <laughs> like not like that at all. <laughs> it's just like the Jews and um, like the Jews who lived in Cairo, different from the ones in Alexandria, different from the ones you know. In, in the, like I call it middle of nowhere places, <laughs> like those small towns in the middle of nowhere. And then you go to the really far flung out diaspora communities like far out like India and China, <laughs> like the Kaifeng Jews who are, I think, would be in present day Shanghai by now. Um, there's the, there are at least a couple of Jewish community, long standing Jewish communities in the Indian subcontinent. Um, and that, that's like Far East Asia. And I don't even, I can't even, and then Africa itself, that's a whole other bottle of wax. Mm. <laughs> like you want to talk about diverse, it's, you're talking about a, a far flung people, a multi ethnic people in the most culturally diverse continent on the planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, so it's kind of, yeah, it, it's just, yeah, more more diverse, better. Uh, I want actual Jewish people. <laughs> so, so I think for, and I know it's hard because you have to ask yourself different questions to make this work. So it's like, well, how would Jewish life adapt to these new circumstances? And you, I guess you kind of have to be an insider to answer that, I guess. But I don't know. What about you and, and Roma culture? How do you want to see that? Well, you know, I'm going to talk about the Roma culture that I am surrounded by because, as you say, it is it is very different. You know, if, if if you look at gypsies in Spain or you look at travelers in the UK or Ireland or if you look at Roma people in Romania, you know, that, that kind of Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. we are massively different. Mm -hmm. You know, so in, in my case, um, one of the things that I would like to see is more normalization. You know, we, we, we think about gypsies in Spain and we think about flamenco dancers and flamenco singers. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think about seasoned workers. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, th there's, there has been a... Um, that idea, it, it is quite funny because that idea was romanticized. Mm -hmm. um, between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, mm -hmm. where it, it, it was, you look at an awful lot of the cinema in Spain from that time, and it features gypsy people mm -hmm. played by white people. You know, okay. but it's, it's, exactly. But it's, it's the gypsy costumes, is the gypsy singing, is the flamenco guitar, is a bit, but by white people. So what I would like to see is, you know, 
more normalization. You know, nowadays, it is very hard for gypsy people in Spain to get a job mm -hmm. in the high street. Mm -hmm. You barely ever see anyone in the high street, you know, uh, the till in the supermarket or uh, as a doctor or as a lawyer. It's mm -hmm. very hard for them to get the right opportunity. And because traditionally, and I say, when I say they, mm -hmm. it's because I have, I have white skin privilege. Mm -hmm. I don't, unless I tell people that I'm gypsy, they don't have a way of knowing. Mm -hmm. And thus, I don't suffer the persecution, I don't suffer the discrimination, but believe me, I can see a massive difference as soon as I say to, to, to people, my great-grandmother was gypsy. You mm -hmm. know, it, 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 it changes right away. It's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to see is, is more of that. You know, I would like to see more, even if it is in medieval games, mm -hmm. you know, I don't care if in medieval games, yes, we were very nomadic because we didn't get the jobs, we were thrown out. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is true that there was an awful lot of pilfering because we had no choice. Mm -hmm. You know, if the only work that gypsies can get is seasonal work, come winter when there is no harvest, what are we meant to do? Mm -hmm. We don't have anywhere to be. We don't. What, what are we meant to do? And I'm not justifying it, but that's how it goes. So what I would like to see is, if you're going to put a medieval city, just put some gypsies out there. Mm -hmm. Like, we were normal. You know, mm -hmm. in, Camp, in Campo de Mitos, and in one of the adventures that I'm writing now, there are gypsy people who are part of the community. Mm. And yes, they are looked by by some people, you know, as cans because they don't stop being gypsy and people don't stop being prejudiced. But this person is a shoemaker mm -hmm. and they make really pretty good shoes. Mm -hmm. And his daughter is involved with a local photographer. Mm. That's the kind of thing I want to do. I want to see. And yes, in the adventure, uh, because it takes place during the summer at a very specific time of the year, there is a gypsy camp because they used to go from place to place. Mm -hmm. But they're not pilfering. They are working with the cattle farmers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the kind of thing I want to see more of. If you want to use our culture, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's totally cool. But punch up. Right. Don't don't, don't punch don't punch us down. Don't put right. us down as the baddies, as the less cultured, as, you know, I know that this is going to sound very weird to some people, but just because an awful lot of gypsy people couldn't read or write doesn't mean that they were, you know, ignorant. Right, right. Because oral tradition, singing tradition is, mm -hmm. you know, incredible among us. So that's what I want to see. Yeah. And I think it's great that you bring up, like, the economic concerns that drives, like, for instance, I think, especially in America, when you talk about Roma culture, they just think the nomadic, the nomadic lifestyle is because they're Roma and not because it's driven by economic factors. Like, no, they keep getting, the reason why they keep moving around is because they keep getting kicked out. Exactly. And people are not hiring them for work. <laughs> so they go where the work is. And they go where they're safe to be. And, and I think, and that's something I didn't know. So I'm, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, because it's like, because the way they say, oh, they, like you said, they really romanticize it. Where it's just like, oh, they're free spirited. That's why they do that. And it's like, uh, no, they do that because everywhere they go, they get kicked out. Nobody's hiring them for work. So what else are you going to do? Exactly. And, you know, yeah. One, one means of oppression, and people don't realize, and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but well, one means of oppression by the establishment is real estate. Mm -hmm. If you deny people the possibility of owning a home, mm -hmm. you're basically getting rid of them. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's happened if, if you only allow people to buy land in a specific place, Mm -hmm. That's how segregation works. Mm -hmm. And that is what happened to us so many times ago. Bloody hell, I remember in the 90s, this is not that long ago, I remember in the 90s, news 
of a town in Andalusia, and if I remember correctly, is a town very close to a pilgrimage place, one of the largest pilgrimage places in the world, El Rocío. Um, and a whole group of gypsy people being driven out of town, literally by stoning them, mm-hmm. pitch and fork sort of thing, in right. the 90s, because somebody accused one of them of rape. Right. It then transpired that it wasn't rape at all. She just didn't want anything else to do with this man, and she accused him of rape, and then she later on confessed. But the whole town went for them. They could have killed them. Right. In the 90s. Right. Yeah. You know, come on. Yeah. Come on. Punch up. For once, punch up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... But yeah, it, it's it's interesting how, especially when it comes to Jews and Roma people, like, it's like, oh yeah, people think that they don't have any stereotypes or prejudices, but the, they definitely do. Yeah. Um, and then they, they get very stubborn about it. It's like, no, no, no. It's, and then it's, it's just like when, um, one of the things that, that we've talked about it before, where it's like, one of the things I want to make very clear to listeners here who are not Jewish. Jewish is not Okay, yes, we practice a a spiritual tradition. Yes, we have a wisdom literature. Yes, we have sacred texts, but Jewish is not a religious identity. Jews are a people. And, and, and that's something that I think a lot of people are like, what? I, I didn't know this. Okay, yeah. you, you, you explained this to me. I had yeah. absolutely no idea. As far as I'm concerned, Jewish people were the people who go to synagogues. Yeah, that, that's why I knew, and this is not that long ago. Okay, I'm 48 years old, and I think you told me this about a year and a half ago. <laughs> you know, the, the, this is how much this connection, how much ignorance there is about, you know, Jewish people and, and Judaism and, and and Roma people. People don't understand how little they know about the cultures they don't share, mm-hmm. and how prevalent stereotypes and cliches are right it's it's very difficult to realize that and and, and i don't want anybody to think that we're having a go at them and that we're just this is not about that Mm -hmm. i think overall white people are just victims of their own system that have stopped them constantly the same lies repeating it again and again and again and again and again right and we need to change that. Yeah, and it's as easy as becoming informed. You know, it's as easy as it happened with me and you. You know, mm-hmm. please tell me where do I find information. And you just gave me a long list of video, and I watched a bunch of them, and I thought, oh my god, mm-hmm. <laughs> how can I have spent forty-seven years of my life without knowing this? Well, in your defense, it's not taught, and and the way it's taught is not taught by people who are insiders to the culture. So you get a warped understanding of it um, because it, it's sort of like ignorant people teaching people even more ignorant than them. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's like... Um, it's also like, but but be prepared to be corrected when people who have knowledge correct you. <laughs> you know, it's like, be prepared to understand that what you learned in school or what you picked up from TV and movies is not what it is. Correct. And, you know, maybe this is something else that we should add to the list of things that we would like to see. I think it would be very nice to see more people reaching out. I think it would be very nice to see more artists, more writers, more publishers reaching out to people from from Roma culture, from from Jewish culture, from Muslim culture, you know, from disability culture, since Mm -hmm. we're talking about people who were, you know, um, exterminated Mm -hmm. by 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 the Nazis. Reach out, talk. Mm -hmm. We are not hiding. We are not that hard to find anymore. You know, just a post in Facebook or in Twitter or in whatever social network you want to use is likely to yield some results. Ask. It's not as if we want to keep our culture, you know, for ourselves and never share it and not let anybody else use it. We just want it to be used in the proper way. That's all. It's not that hard. Yeah, it's like 
and, and, and we want to it's like everybody we want to see ourselves it's like especially when we're coming from like this horrific event in the past not it's not an event it's like it's not even one event it's like this horrific period in our past where we were where people literally tried to destroy us as people mm. um seeing ourselves represented it kind of it, it, it's hopeful you know what i'm saying it's like okay we're gonna be not it's not necessarily true but it's like imagining a future where we exist imagining a present where we exist and thriving even you know it it, it means something it's like and i i think especially it was like in the case of like sci-fi or something like that where you're definitely trying to imagine the future or something futuristic <laughs> you know like please don't forget us <laughs> like like please don't do a firefly where it's like okay you're using chinese <sighs> words and chinese writing iconography and, and, and no chinese one speaks con- chinese concepts but no chinese people <laughs> no, and, 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 and finally enough, you read something that's been written in Chinese and you read it in English. How clever is that? Yeah, you. Oh, mm-hmm. come on. It's like, okay, so they, so they speak Chinese, they write Chinese, they use Chinese concepts like, I don't even, I might be misremembering this. I might be getting it mixed up with Avatar. <laughs> but it's like, they, they read Chinese and they write Chinese, but there are no Chinese people in the setting. <laughs> it's just, what happened to the billion and a third Chinese people? What what happened to them? <laughs> it makes me wonder. It's like it's not like Chinese people were a tiny, you know, a tiny group of people. We're talking about one fifth or one sixth of the world's population. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, uh, and, a- and you and you know what? By the time that uh, <laughs> but by the you know future in which Firefly is located, I bet it would be a lot more Chinese people than that. Oh, yeah. So, now, so at the end of the day, come on, I, I reckon in the next 100 years, 50% of the world population is going to be Chinese. Yeah, Chinese of some sort. Yeah, so... <laughs> and, and it's like, um, and, and hat tip to the Wagers right now who are really going through it. <laughs> yeah. um, some horrific parallels to to what happened uh, in the Holocaust with that. And it's just like, it's really, really messed up. But, um, and we can talk about that in another another podcast, like yeah. people today who, who need to be kind of brought to the forefront. But um, but yeah, it's like, especially like with sci-fi or whatever, let's say you like, and I'm like, yes, please mind the very, it's like we, our culture is so rich and so varied despite our small numbers, that it's like, please, it's like, because it seems like the only thing people get out of Jewish culture is like, okay, they, they want, um, when they want a God to beat up on, <laughs> they, they use ours. Mm-hmm. And when they want um, a, a scary monster, they pick our golem sometimes. Or they, um, what else do they do? They pick our golem. Or they use the angels <laughs> that, that we came up with as mm-hmm. uh, for, for whatever theological point they want to make, or just as monsters. Um, but but you know there's you know more to it than that. It's like I have a whole other rant about how how people use our books and our folklore and our religion. But I, I, I'll rant about that later. But. But yeah, it's like we, we, it's our cultures are so rich. It's like, yes, I want you to use our monsters, but it's like yes, but it, but we're more than the golem, and we're, we're definitely more than dibbooks. It's like we have so many demons, <laughs> we have yeah. so many demons, and nobody's using them. But look, what, you know, imagine what those demons must feel like. I mean, Why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they've been afflicting humans for thousands of years, and nobody's giving them any credit. <laughs> I know they must be thinking, "Oh my God, what does Satan do that I can do?" They must, they must be seething. I, I would be really pissed off, <laughs> really. Yeah, and, and we came up with that guy too. And, but, but the way exactly. we use him is different. <laughs> and the way we use him is different. It's like, "Aha, you're Satan. You're the enemy of God. We want to follow you." And our thing, like, "What are you talking about? God is our house." 
<laughs> me, and I, me and I have a whole wager going on about the human nature and all that. <laughs> but but also, I, I still think the Satan, you know, Lucifer was the right, was a good guy. So um, that, that's a different take altogether, <laughs> completely different. But, you know, that, that's one thing that I would like also to see. People using the culture correctly, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and preparing to acknowledge when something might need changing. I, I remember... Um, uh, or a little while ago, there was a massive argument and discussion about the use of the word phylactery. Oh, God. Um, yes. Which was a bit, look, if you want to use a phylactery, I'm sure that there would be no issue if it wasn't because you're actually using for one thing, and that one thing is evil intent. Mm-hmm. And then somebody immediately came up with, oh, well, wait a second, phylactery comes from the Latin phylacterium, in which a saint's remains are carried in, you know, something that usually is a rug. So I said, okay, firstly, even if that is the case, I don't know enough about the etymology of the word, but even if that is the case, you are still doing exactly the same thing. You're using something that's meant to actually be benevolent and good, and you're attributing it to just one thing that is one of the most evil things that you can find in the whole of Dungeons and Dragons. I can see a problem with that. But if Jewish people are telling you, please use another word, come on. Soul jar is right there. <laughs> soul jar. And soul jar, at least, like phylactery is something I had to look up in a dictionary. <laughs> if my vocabulary wasn't broad enough for that, I'd have to look it up like, what in the world is a phylactery? <laughs> but if you say soul jar, I know exactly what that means. <laughs> it's like, Soul jar, soul stone, something, you know. But but the thing is, again, you want to use the word phylactery. Cool. Mm -hmm. Don't punch down. Punch up. Why can't it be used to hold the soul of an angel or to hold the soul of innocence or Mm -hmm. to hold the soul of kindness? Why does it have to be just for evil? Right. Yeah, like, you know it, that. That's the thing that I don't understand. You know, it's a bit. It, what was going on? Don't punch down. Don't use right. somebody else's culture to represent something that's bad. Yeah. It. Yeah. Like um. How do I say this? This is a, like a broader point, but it's like yeah, people like to dip into Jewish the Jewish mysticism and the Jewish occult to give their stuff a a sort of foreign, exotic, creepy, scary edge. And I hate that. Um, Yes, of course, Jews, we have our own occult traditions. Yes, we do. And it's, yes, Parliament, yes, Kabbalah is, there are different kinds of Kabbalah, actually, but moving along. (laughs) The... And then it's sort of like, well, is it magic? Or, and then there's a whole debate that we have. Is it magic or miracles? <laughs> it's a whole thing. Because certain holy people can do D&D type shit. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. It's like, okay. Uh, I mean, there's like rabbis who make rivers flow backwards in order to win an argument. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> wow. just, no, he actually lost that argument. <laughs> That's the thing. You lose that argument because the whole thing, the whole shtick about being Jewish is like these supernatural powers are not an arbiter of truth. But, <laughs> which really, and they would tell God to butt out when God directly intercedes. And it's like... Yeah, but you said that this is ours, and you told us that we this is we the ones who want to figure this out. So you can butt out, and, and God butts out. Um, but but it's it's just oh, there's a, so much folklore. It's like it's so much folklore and so many things that is so rich to mine, both like seriously and like and funny. And it, but it's like if you go to and it's the same thing, but I, I assume with Roma culture too, where it's like you want that. Ex, you know that exotifying edge to something and make it sound spooky and exotic or whatever and you know and so ooh, we're gonna put the gypsy i'm sorry i'm so sorry we're gonna put the the, the fortune teller here and she's gonna yes. say doom and gloom things Ooh, curses it, yeah the roma curses the curses is the thing <laughs> it's like oh. the curses yeah the yeah can we not 
Um, but the, the, the thing is, there there is the, the thing is that there is truth in it. Okay, the the Roma, you know, we gypsies, we've used witchcraft as a means to scare white people to leave us alone. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's the truth. You know, <laughs> even today, mm-hmm. they they do that. I'm, I'm not kidding. Even even today. Uh, you see an awful lot of of, of Roma of gypsy beggars in in the streets selling, you know, their little charms or trying to sell uh, rosemary, which in Spain is a very sacred herb. Mm-hmm. And um, I have seen them, which which I find a little bit oh come on. Uh, I have seen them in the street when I've said to them, look, I I don't, I don't give money away to anybody. I can give you food, but I'm not going to give money away. And I, I was with a friend of mine at the time, and he said, look. I, I don't give money either. I said, well, something bad is going to happen to you because I'm gypsy and I'm cursing you. It was a bit, yeah, that's not how it works, firstly. Uh, secondly, you're using that really, really badly. And thirdly, my God, it's been going on for hundreds of years and you still, it still works. Uh, wow. Um, so it's a bit, yeah, you know, the, the, the woman reading the tarot, there is truth to that stereotype, but it is a matter of how you use it. You know, when when people, when, when, when gypsies used to go from place to place in Spain, it was very common for them to make love potions, mm-hmm. healing salves, you know, mm-hmm. ointments. Mm-hmm. It was very common to use their, you know, quote unquote powers mm-hmm. for good, not, not just for evil. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Yeah, it's something similar with Jewish people too. Huh? Funny how that keeps happening. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's sort of like with Jewish people, and it's like, oh, um, because we use scientific knowledge to to cure people. It, it, yeah. Oh, it's clearly witchcraft. No, no, it's it's. We learned this from the Muslims. Who, never mind. Exactly. <laughs> or, it's, so. or, it's like, or it's um. And we have like, I think like, you know, we, the Roma have like the curses. We have the evil eye that we're terrified of. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> no, no, no. How's that? How's that? How's that? Exactly. Uh, well. <laughs> it's like, we're terrified of that thing. It's like, if you really want to, if you're going to do a horror campaign with Jewish stuff, put the evil eye in there. <laughs> like, that's all you have to do. <laughs> we were terrified. We're not going to read it. <laughs> we're going to tell you right now. We, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The sensitivity, we're going to be like, Okay, like, do you have enough protection before I open this book? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and, 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 and this is quite interesting because the evil eye is meant to be the outmost the pinnacle of, of, of gypsy curses. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it's, oh, the, it's, it's one of the things that we say, oh, he's giving you the eye. Mm-hmm. And that means that he's given you the evil eye, that, that they have looked at you and cursed you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that's kind of how it works. And you're meant to be doing this, you know, put the finger between your first and second, you, you have the thumb between your first and second um, finger to protect yourself. Uh, that, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's a Roma thing, that's a gypsy thing. <laughs> you know, it, it still happens in Spain. So, yeah, and that is something else that I wanted to talk about. And is stop using us as excuses for all the people's evil. Mm. You know, I, I think I, I made a post about this and I, I spoiler coming, listener, spoiler coming. Uh, because I was really upset uh, watching the final episode of a Spanish series called 30 Coins. Oh, yeah. Listeners, if you haven't uh, watched that series yet, is from our geekiest director, Alex de la Iglesia. And it's basically about uh, the 30 coins that the Romans paid Judas to betray Jesus and how those 30 coins become a tool of the devil to try to control the world. And they are uh, items of power. And there is a cabal of, you know, or there is a a group of uh, uh, anti-Catholics who want to get them. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, cabal is a Jewish word, correct? Okay, Kabbalah. Okay. Okay. And I think some people took that term and then they said, okay, we're going to use this truncated thing to mean like this secret evil organization. Okay, so it's, it's just, I, I don't want to use that. Uh, I was a little bit conscious about using that word because I, I, I think there are some connotations that I'd rather avoid. So there is this group of anti-cardinals and anti-Catholic that are trying to gather it. Anyway... <laughs> At the end of the show, when the coins have been gathered, 
somebody who happens to be an awful stereotype of the town idiot. Okay. Which is, by itself is a bit like, oh my God, why, why are we doing this to ourselves? <laughs> he comes to explain how, you know, Napoleon had three of these coins and he went to Russia to find a fourth because somebody told him that somebody in Russia had one and then he lost. And Hitler had five and somebody told him that a Jewish person had one more coin and that's why he did the whole Second World War thing because he was trying to find out what Jewish person had the coin that's why he was killing them all. And I, I, when I heard that, I was holy freaking fuck. <laughs> Seriously. Are you, are you really going to trivialize in a fantasy world, what happened in Second World War? Because, oh my God, no, there's so many people oppressed for being Christ killers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, holy, oh my God, I was, I was so, yeah, that, those 20 seconds of dialogue have completely ruined the series for me. Like, no, stop doing that, people. Don't, don't do that. Yeah, the, the, don't, yeah don't, yeah, don't render like, real history like that into some sort of occult thing or like not occult thing but like into some don't make it about for evil, evil. evil and, and human evil and or whatever don't please don't don't legitimize it by putting that rationale into it <laughs> you know like it, it's like oh if hitler hadn't had the coins he wouldn't have been that bad mm-hmm you know, no, this is real pain. This is real experiences. These are real memories. Mm-hmm. And quite frankly, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I have nothing, no connection with Jewish people other than you and another couple of friends I have in, in Facebook who are Jewish. But even when I read that and I, and I heard that, it was a bit, I cannot believe how painful this must be. You know, come on. So please, don't ever, ever use real pain, real genocide. Don't ever use a fantasy excuse to justify it, Mm -hmm. to explain Mm -hmm. it. It doesn't work like that. You know, it's like when this uh, World of Darkness book came out and they, you know, the whole extermination of gays in in Chechnya is like, oh no, the the vampires are using that as a smoke screen. Don't fucking do that. Mm -hmm. Never. Please stop that. Absolutely. No, no, no. That's just humans being humans. Humans being rotten. (laughs) We don't need extra reasons. Like, no. And the thing is, it's like, there are plenty of stories to tell about, uh, say, Nazis doing occult research because I think that was real. Yep. Yeah, that that was real. There were there was like a Nazis who were doing like like weird occult stuff, but that that is completely separate from not not completely separate because they were Nazis, but it was it was not used as the justification for the atrocity. No. It, and so it's like so if they were looking for objects of, with great spiritual or magical power, it's like um, like a Captain America with the uh, Red Skull looking for the Tesseract. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was cool with that because it wasn't. We knew he was a Nazi and therefore a bad guy, but they didn't make it like the Jews were hiding it in their shtetls. You know, it's <laughs> like no. Exactly. You know, it, it was the, the Tesseract was a side effect. He mm-hmm. was still a motherfucker, you know, without looking for the Tesseract or anything. They, the, the Tesseract was just another tool of oppression that they wanted to control. Yeah. But not the justification, oh, because, you know, somebody had this, we had to exterminate the whole people, you know, we had to exterminate. No, mm-hmm. no, it, it, it just stopped using fantasy as a means to justify real evil. Mm-hmm. and real pain it it doesn't work like that it's not fair it's not right and quite frankly from the creative point of view 
is cheap as fuck. It's yeah. very cheap. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's cheap. Yeah. Just like, if please, give us something to look forward to. Like, don't, don't just make a whole story about tragedy, you know? It was like, we had... There's more to us as a people than the worst thing that happened to us in modern history. Correct. <laughs> you know, and so... You know, there's so many ways to be inspired by our culture, so many ways that with so many like really awesome, flattering ways to use our culture that we'd be so excited to see if it ever hit mainstream media. <laughs> we'd be so we'd be so tickled. <laughs> like, you, you know you know what? Once I, I was talking with a historian, the the, the the historian who wrote the game Akelarre. And uh, you know, we were having a conversation about having gay people in medieval mm-hmm. times. And essentially, he said, you know, but, you know, if you have gay people in medieval times, you were going to have it very difficult. And if you have it in the game, then you're going to be persecuted all the time because you were killed all the time. And I, and I said to him, look, even if there is truth in that, why do you feel the need to concentrate and focus on that aspect? Because, you know, we lived, we loved, and we survived so why instead of thinking and talking and describing how we suffered, why don't you use our resilience, mm-hmm. our capability to use and create our own network of, of help, of support, how we survived, how we thrived, for goodness sake, mm-hmm. despite everything. Why don't you concentrate on that? Why does it always have to be on the suffering? Mm-hmm. You know, again, Punch up. Mm-hmm. I know it's, I've admittedly, it's harder to do. Punch up. Yeah. It's like, um, but yeah, it's like, well, if they were killing all the gay people, how did we get here? <laughs> That's something I would wonder. But like, it's like they were killing all the, no, they weren't. It's, it's like, I think a lot of times too, um, just as a tangent to that point, it's like we like to, we in 2021 Earth, like, especially in Western cultures, like to believe history goes in a straight line from barbarity to progress. <laughs> and it's not, you know, there were times when people like us were more accepted <laughs> long ago, you know, where, where it was pretty chill for us. So... The, people mistake technology and knowledge with civility and yeah. civilization, and it's not the case at all. They were way, way better civilizations in the past than we are now, and they were really worse civilizations. And there have been civilizations where they had some better times and bad times. It is a pendulum, and it's <laughs> always swinging. It's never still. It never will be still. But don't think for a second that just because the Greek or the Romans or, you know, whoever, the Egyptians... Just because this happened 2,000 years ago, because it happened 1,000 years ago, that they were less civil and less, I'm going to say the word, woke Mm -hmm. than us, because it's not always the case. Uh, And Mm -hmm. we need to acknowledge that and realize that. Yeah, because, like, because especially in terms like, well, it's historically accurate. But yeah, the things you consider historically accurate are... First of all, you wouldn't know because you don't you haven't been there. You weren't there. Like, okay. Yeah, that's number one. And number two, the things you think remarkable about the past were probably normalized to those people back then. Mm-hmm. So like so you might think, oh no, a black person in Scandinavia and the Vikings at the time was like, of course, that's Bob. <laughs> Bob brings us our spices. <laughs> but but you you know what? You know what? Let's assume for a second. Let's assume for a second that Bob is the first time that he visits Malmo, I don't know, for saying mm-hmm. very north. Just because they didn't or they weren't at the time that familiar with black people mm-hmm. means that they were immediately going to discriminate them or not know where they came from. The likelihood is that that person would inspire curiosity yeah. more than, you know, fear or hatred. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's like, okay, well, it's like, it's it's sort of like you like people just assume because people look different or or speak differently. It's sort of like the the like the approach would be fear and revulsion as opposed to like oh a new kind of human. I didn't know humans came like that. Exactly, and, and oh <laughs> look at the wonders they come. I mean, can you imagine the first time that somebody brought pepper to Norway? 
<laughs> or saffron. Or, you know, any, any of those spices that are not found up there. Can you imagine the first time that somebody in Finland or Germany saw silk? Mm -hmm. and, and no, Marco Polo wasn't the first one to go and come back. Mm -mm. Okay, no, it is not true. People knew about the things. But imagine, they would be the bringer of wonders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, so, yeah. And, then, and so, and they get back to what you were saying. It's like, like the things I would be like, and I'm going to talk about little stuff that would like tickle me to death if that's all I. I know in like popular media, people treat Jewishness. All right, if we're not tragic figures who are dying, mm -hmm. we are the butt of the joke. Jewishness is, is a joke. Jewish identity is a joke. We're just a, a, a a quirky version of wasp. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. And you know when that's not true. And if there's a lot of whole history about assimilation and all that that I, I can't get into that right now. You know, there's a whole lot about, you know, internalized self-hatred that that we can talk about, but you know, but, but I'm not gonna get into that. But by and large especially in American media, Jews are either dying or funny. And the funny doesn't come from, oh, this is a human situation, that's what makes it funny. The funny comes from, you're Jewish, and that's what's funny. I'm sick of that, number one. But another thing I want to see where it's like, where the Jewishness is cosmetic, or some, like a throwaway line, somebody said, oh, by the way, I'm Jewish, or whatever. I want to see somebody doing something Jewish, like participating in a Jewish ritual of some kind. And, and the thing, the small thing, I swear this is so tiny. Jewish people listening will understand how tiny this is. Lighting Shabbat candles. Mm -hmm. I would be tickled to death. Lighting Shabbat candles. Literally two candles. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Two candles on Friday night. That's it. Like, they, they don't have to say Kiddush. They don't have to do the blessing on the challah. They don't have to do the prayers or whatever. Kabbalah Shabbat, I don't need that. Just light Shabbat candles. That's all I care. That, that, that would tickle me to death. So what about you, Paco? <laughs> um, it's, it's very tricky for me. Um, I, I just want to see gypsy people working in everyday jobs. Just mm. that, that alone. I would be very happy um, to see mm. just that uh, because the, the the problem is the problem is that I see myself. I see that, and I'm talking about Spanish gypsies. Okay, I'm not talking about anybody else outside there because I I don't I'm not that familiar with what their realities are like. Mm -hmm. But in my case, I I just don't want to see any more white women reading tarot cards or taking a look at the glass ball, you know. I, I want to see people, I don't want to see more people playing guitar or the castanets and dancing their way through life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to see people, you know, I want to see gypsies as police officers, mm. as judges, as, as nurses, as doctors, as teachers. Yeah. Or, or even like those, um, I was thinking like tech startup, <laughs> tech startup stuff. Do We're you like, know, uh, they're making an app. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I, 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 that, that would tickle me to death. That I would be so, so happy to see a medieval game where, you know, the sheriff of the city is, or the the chief of the guard is gypsy. Mm -hmm. I would so, so love to see mm -hmm. a Cthulhu game in which the owner of the bookstore is gypsy. Mm. That's that's it. it. It it doesn't take more than that for me, you know. Oh, wow. It's I know, but but the thing is that that's because our reality here is very, very harsh. Mm. You know, yeah. seriously, I live in a three quarter of a million people city. It's the third largest city in the whole of the country. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say that I've been to every shop every time, 
But I think I have seen one gypsy woman working in retail once. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, and I think for sci-fi, well, that the, the lighting should buy candles. That could be like any genre, I think. But like, um, but I think like when you're talking about like Captain the Guard stuff, like like Roma people in everyday jobs, and it's like okay, well, okay, in science fiction when we talk about spaceships and stuff. Just have part of the crew, like be, you know. Yes. <laughs> have us on the crew, or or like let the chaplain be Jewish, or not, not even a chaplain. Just be like, just have like a minion of Jews on a big, huge spaceship doing a Jewish thing. Or we just like have challah every now and then in the replicator, <laughs> or or arguing about whether or not challah from the replicator counts as challah. You know, do we say a blessing over that? Yes. <laughs> go that. Or does wine from the replicator count? Um, or if, you, like, speaking of Roma people, where it's like, well, the, I mean, like, the science officer can be Roma, or the, you know, the, um, where it's, you know, it, and it makes some, it's like, or like on a spaceship, you know, like your tiny crew, your, your skeleton crew running a spaceship, it's like, yeah, it's just spaceship, or, or in this, or on this new planet where, like, where, like, the, the far future kind of situation where we're scattered among the stars and, you know, there are planets where we're terraforming and all that. Like, yeah, have some Roman people develop, you know, building something there. Yes. You know. And, and you know, I mean, what, if, if you want to really portray Roman people, we are very keen on family. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very big on family gatherings and we're very big on oral history. Right. So not just that, not just, oh, you know, my grandma used to tell me this story, you know, of my family. Just acknowledge us as mm. normal, productive members of society. And I, I will be happy with that. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, we, we've been going for an hour. Yeah. Um, so... Um, and I reckon people are going to have an awful lot to think about. And I want to publish this today because it's the right day to publish it. And, uh, and next, next week I can publish the episode that we recorded last week. Uh, but I, I want to record that. So, uh, listeners, uh, please leave us your comments. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, just so you know, uh, listeners, if you leave a stupid, trollish, nasty comment... I am not going to pay it any attention, seriously. If you dismiss, like somebody did recently, the topics that we discuss here, because you don't give them any importance and you think that we should discuss other topics because those are the topics that matter to you, fuck off. We are quite happy to discuss anything that you want us to, but not at the expense of anything else because of your stupid prejudice. Not going to happen. So by all means, do leave your comments. We genuinely love to read them and we love to hear them and we love to have them. But never, under any circumstances, diminish or reject the premises of the things that we speak about in here because this is our podcast, this is our space, and if you don't like it, go fucking listen to something else. But never, ever tell us that racism is not an issue when we say it is, that stereotyping is not an issue when we say it is, and that we need to make things better for an awful lot of people in the world of role-playing games just because you're not affected by this. Fuck that attitude. I'm sorry to get upset about this, but fuck that attitude. Mm. Yeah, amen. Um, but also, it's like, you know, you can start your own podcast. There's nothing... Exactly. That. Um, the, the, isn't that what they're always telling us when we want to see ourselves? It's like, you can do, make your own. Yeah. <laughs> hey, make your own. Or just talk to us about it nicely. You know, I've listened to this. It doesn't touch me, but this thing touches me. How about this? And mm -hmm. we will cover it. I will be happy. This, I want to give a voice I want to use the privilege I have of being able to have this platform to give a voice to those who don't have it, but never, ever, ever come to me to get a voice at the expense of somebody else's. Not going to happen, ever. So there, remember to subscribe. Love you.
Yeah, we do. Oh, do I have to say?